Welcome to a wonderful place where you can achieve such things. <laughs> I can see it in your eyes. You are wondering, what is this place? Well, as you can see, there are three doors over there. Now, I'll give you the chance. On what door are you going to enter? Okay? Ten seconds. Start. Now. Time is up! Now. What door are you going to enter? Door number one, number two, or three. All of them is a magical place. This place is an activity in kitchen for seasoning and flavoring food ingredients. Now, let me share something about it. I want you to learn from it gain something from it. This is such a wonderful journey, so enjoy it! Most of the times, we enjoy eating. When we eat to enjoy, we take in the qualities of the food. The appearance, where suddenly we're gonna ask ourselves, does it look good? The aroma, does it smell good? The taste? How does it taste? Like, does it taste good? Mouth feel? How does the food feel in our mouth? Is the texture good? The temperature? Is the food at the right serving temperature? An appetizing food will simulate the senses. Our senses of sight, smell, taste, touch, even hearing will all contribute to our enjoyment of food. Trivia, the human tongue has about 2,000 to 8,000 taste buds on it. These taste buds have taste receptor cells or gustatory cells that perceive the basic taste of flavor of foods, namely sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and savory. The taste receptor cells send information to the brain ranging from, I don't like this, this is just okay, to I can eat this every day for the rest of my life. But how do we actually build flavors? Building flavor can be likened to a painting. When we paint, we put layers and layers of colors on a canvas. When these colors blend well or contrast in a way that they still work together perfectly, then you have a great piece of art. Cooking is much the same way. A well-cooked dish is a harmony of flavors. The flavors of dish can be divided into two, the primary flavors and the secondary flavors. Knowing primary flavors, the flavors of the main ingredients, and knowing the secondary flavors, the flavors of the other ingredients and the dish that enhance the flavor of the main ingredients. Now, let's start talking about seasoning and flavoring food ingredients. Remember that seasoning and flavoring are important parts of the cooking process. Seasoning means to bring out the natural flavors of the food without changing its flavor. Flavoring, on the other hand, means adding a new flavor, which results in changing of the original flavor of the food. Moving on. There are common seasoning and flavoring ingredients. Number one is the salt. Salt is the most important seasoning ingredient. Seasoning with salt at the early stages of cooking gives it enough time to penetrate and disperse flavor all throughout the dish. Be careful though when adding salt. It is easier to add more if needed than putting too much and making the dish very salty. Number two is pepper. Pepper is also known as peppercorns. They come in black, white, and green forms. 
Pepper adds a sensation of warmth in the mouth that opens the palate. Third, onion, garlic, and other aromatic vegetables. They contribute rich flavor and aroma to the dishes. Using fresh aromatics is always preferable to using dried ones. Fresh aromatics, especially onions and garlic, are usually available all year around. Fourth, lemon or clemency juice. They perks up a dish. They create a nice balance with fats and crepes. Fifth, wine, whiskey, beer, and other alcoholic beverages. They are used to flavor soups, sauces, and main dishes. Some wines require cooking or reduction to bring out the desired flavors. Sixth, herbs and spices. Under herbs and spices, we have number one, basil. It is an herb widely used in cuisine all over the world. Its leaves have a strong, sweet smell. The leaves are generally added at the last stage of cooking. Second is oregano. In oregano, the leaves are aromatic and have a warm and slightly bitter taste. It is known as the pizza herb and is very popular in Italian cuisine. It works well with the tomato dishes. Dried oregano leaves can be more flavorful than fresh ones. Third, rosemary. In rosemary, the needle-like light green leaves have a very slightly sour taste. Its aroma complements most cooked food. Rosemary is commonly used in stuffing and roast meats. Fourth, thyme. Thyme has tiny brownish green leaves. It is a common component of bouquet carni and a bundle of different herbs used to flavor stocks, soup, and stews. Fifth, bay leaves. Bay leaves are stiff, dark green oval leaves. Because they are highly aromatic, bay leaves are widely used in making stocks, sauces, stews, and braised meats. Sixth is parsley. Parsley is a curly leaf or flat leaf. The leaves have a delicate and sweet flavor. Parsley is often used as a garnish. Seventh is Cleantro. Cleantro is the plant that produces coriander seeds. The leaves look like flat parsley. It is widely used in Asian cuisine. Eighth is Mint. In mint, the leaves are aromatic, have a sweet flavor and a cool aftertaste. Spearmint and peppermints are varieties of mint. It is popularly used to flavor teas, fruit beverages, candies, and ice creams. Ninth is cayenne or red pepper. Cayenne or red pepper is the ground form of hot red chili. Small amounts can give a pleasant of spiciness to soup and sauces. Tenth is paprika. Paprika is the ground form of sweet red chili. The Spanish paprika variety is mild in flavor but bright in color. Paprika is used to season and color rice, teas, and soups. Eleventh is cinnamon. Cinnamon is a romantic bark of the cinnamon or cashew tree used as a flavoring ingredient and a condiment. It is widely used in cooking savory and sweet foods. A mixture of cinnamon and sugar are popularly used to flavor breads, pastries, and cereals. That's it! Did you learn something? Well, I want you to apply it right now!